like any kind of music well played. And the rest of it is cross fertilization, the uh, Silk Road and all kinds of things. Uh, he's doing a terrific job of, of uh, cross fertilization. He, yo -yo -ma. Spreading yo-yo. And uh, any type of music, even rock and roll, some is well done. Some is just plain junk. And some is imitative and meaningless. But any approach which uses music as an expression, if it's well done, I take my hat off, which I very rarely wear. <laughs> but uh, and, my, and uh, somebody like Marsalis, who is a terrific young man who can play Haydn trumpet concerto better than anybody else. And then I like guitar when it's well played. The simplest definition of what I've been doing or trying to do in a lifetime. Opening doors. If I open the door for you to appreciate music and understand music, then my, my job, job worked. But that's what I'm doing with, uh, as a teacher with all my students. One part of it is to teach them the mechanics of instrumental playing. One part of it is uh, to uh, open their ears to something that they were not aware of before. And sometimes I say that I'm basically there to disturb them, <laughs> to bring, uh, to start thinking about things that they were never told or never made aware of. And uh, that is the, the basis of, uh, of the teaching profession and the, the basis of the performing arts that uh, on one hand enrich the uh, experience for people, enrich their lives, because as you've heard me say in the past that music is one of the few permanent values in human existence. So my job is was to do it through performances for mm. roughly almost uh, 75 or more years. And while doing this, I was always teaching, and now the uh, focus is on teaching. My pride of my life existence was that when people listened on the radio or something, they knew Ode Starker. Oh yes, oh yes. And there are very few in the world who are recognizable. And if I, in my lifetime, if I call a, uh, or recall names that who were the ones, when you heard uh, Pavarotti, you knew it's Pavarotti. I didn't particularly like him because his taste was not mine, but the glory of the sound was recognizable. When you heard Maria Callas, you recognized him. When you heard UC Bjerling, the tenor, you knew it's UC Bjerling. And then, of course, when you heard Heifetz, you knew it's Heifetz. And then there were, Rubinstein was the, one of the few pianists who was recognizable. There were all the great ones and terrific ones, but the recognizability is the one that distinguishes the recreative artist from the other one. From the performer? From the performer. They are all performers, but the fact is that uh, the recognizability is the one factor in my mind, also, that makes them uh, what we call the or class artists. The gold. Outside, no, outside the or, outside the French expression, uh, the or classification, that you don't see who is one and who is second, who is third and fourth. They are outside of the classification. Because people always look for saying that oh, he's number one. Number one in what? Uh, the fact is that there are certain disrecognizable people who are outside of classification. And it's up to you to say whether you think he's better than the other or he's uh, worse than the other. There's a problem that I have with the English language. That they say to make music. Don't make music, play music. The English language lacks that expression. Because in Italian, in French, in German, there is another expression for making music or to what I call musicate. And at one time I tried to uh, make an attempt to uh, introduce it into the English language, but people said, nah, it doesn't sound too good. Uh, but there is something to it if you understand the meaning of it, because in Italian, 
is fare la musica, to make music, and suonare is the expression really to make music. And, and in, in French? German, in, oh, in, excuse in me? German it is uh, Musik machen oder musizieren. And uh, a French expression I think is, uh, uh, is uh, faire de la musique, uh, musicier. They use it, musicier. But English there is no, no alternate word. And the implication is richer? The implication, the implication is that uh, the uh, <coughs> make music is labored. So the reason why I get on this tangent is right now because I said it needs hard work and uh, to uh, attain consistency and all the rest of the elements what we talk about. But basically it's supposed to be a joyful expression of a human being to the great masterpieces of the past or the present. And that is to play. To play. You say in your uh, memoir that the most important day in your life was when Gabrielle was born. It was. It was because uh, and ever since she caused me headaches, all kinds of things, what she has been doing in her life. But I'm very proud of her because she's an outstanding human being who, strangely enough, put some genes into my grandson who's concerned about the others, not just for him. In the meantime, he's be becoming a successful jazz pianist, of all things. But in the meantime, he writes well, he speaks well, he looks well, and he is belonging to that group, which is uh, we, uh, no, me, we, and the uh, um, mother organization is free the children not feed the children to be to which I'm sure you sent uh, 15 20 dollars or something like that but free the children to establish a communication between the uh, advanced world and their world and their starvation and uh, the worst kind of conditions they live in and he belongs to that group which is also uh, is uh, the young leaders kind of a thing that while he's pursuing his love for jazz and for music and so on, he's concerned. I myself was never uh, reluctant to state that I am not truly interested to have admiration toward uh, me, but what I'm doing. And for me, this is an important distinction. You bet, you bet. And that's why I always repeat that we are in the music in a deadly serious business to create something which is on a high level and trying the message etc etc but don't take yourself seriously that would be pretty good advice for most anything wouldn't it well i think that uh, from the lofty heights of the 86 years <laughs> i think that most of the wisdom i get there is not just for cello playing so i lived a long life whether it ends tomorrow, it ends next week, or two years from now, and God forbid, uh, like uh, the friends whose friend reached just now 100, I don't uh, uh, fool around with the thought even, because I just accept the inevitable. And that, by the way, relates to some of the conversations we had, that what is the truly successful musical performance that seems inevitable not predictable if it's predictable uh, it's inevitable yeah that's why it's, uh, i never thought about it but it really sounded good that's what this whole enterprise that i'm in for that's the, the, the thing what I tell all the people that makes no darn difference because you're contributing to the, uh, to the search of beauty by a conductor, composer, whoever, and you are contributing. So that's the, uh, the, uh, the parting sentence to my students. Contribute. I hope I managed to answer some 
only your questions. If not, call me. <laughs>